Hello there! This is a video that I've been looking forward to making for the past couple weeks since I finished this book. I came home from school to vote in the election and I was going to film this video during that time and then the election happened and I could not film this video that night or the next day. But now I'm glad that the election has happened and I get to make this video now with that in mind. This is going to be a discussion on Jodi Pico's latest novel, Small Great Things. If you don't know about this book or Jodi Pico, she is one of the most successful modern novelists, one of my absolute favorite authors and inspirations. She inspires me not only as a writer, but as a person, a speaker, an artist in every way. Jodi Pico's books are usually centered around some sort of topic, a problem, or a current event that really bothers her, a what-if question, and then the characters form around that, and the story happens. One of the best parts about reading a Jodi Pico novel, and I'll talk about this specifically for this book later on, but before she starts writing, Jodi does extensive research. For previous books, she has visited inmates on death row. For whatever topic she's writing about, she interviews experts and goes out into the field goes on research trips. Anything you read about in her books, from the way that people talk to the facts, just the context of anything that's going on, it's based on her detailed, meticulous research. And I've always appreciated that so much with her books. Any process, legally or anything that happens, it's going to be accurate. So going into Small Great Things, I already felt a sense of trust. On top of that, her characters are always so crazy real. The plot is enticing, it makes you uncomfortable, it asks you questions about your life. So I guess I'll get into what Small Great Things is all about. I don't always pick up Jodi Pico's books the second they come out. For this one, I was at Barnes & Noble on October 8th and I read it in two weeks, which is good for me. To say that this topic is timely really would just show my privilege, but with the events of the past few weeks, the past year. This book is important for a lot of people to read right now. So in Small Great Things, our main character is Ruth. She is a nurse on the labor and delivery ward of her hospital. She's worked there for over 20 years and she is the only black nurse there. So we meet Ruth right off the bat. She goes in to check up on these patients who had their baby already and she's going to clean the baby and do all of the next day stuff. We quickly find out that the parents are complete white supremacists. He has a swastika tattoo on his head. They ask for her to be taken off care of the baby, and the hospital does. And so later Ruth is in the room with all the babies, and this baby is there. The baby goes into cardiac arrest, and she's not allowed to touch the baby, so she hesitates. And eventually she starts to help the baby. Everyone comes rushing in, what's going on? And then the baby dies. Of course the parents are devastated, and they immediately blame Ruth, and they decide to press charges and take her into a murder trial. The story gets so much more intense as we go on. And we have three different perspectives in this novel. One, Ruth. Jodi did extensive research and interviews with women of color to develop the voice of Ruth. We have Turk, who's the father of the baby, whose chapters made me want to vomit. And then we have Kennedy, who ends up being Ruth's lawyer. Kennedy is a white person who has never had to deal with the topic of white privilege, and we end up learning a lot through Kennedy, as she learns a lot through Ruth. I'm not going to spoil anything in this video, but I highly recommend reading this book. It's a very important novel. It taught me a lot that I'm going to discuss now. Moments that have stuck out to me, watching through the novel how the racism that Ruth experiences, when people think that racism is just blatant, so obvious, like, no, if it were that easy, it would be that easy. It is systemic and institutional, but the truth is that it happens in these small acts, which is sort of where the title comes from. I've also done a lot of research on the process of this novel, and the title Small Great Things comes from a quote that's attributed to Martin Luther King about how maybe I cannot do great things, but I can do small things in a great way. It's something like that. There's a scene, and this is not really a spoiler, where Ruth takes Kennedy shopping with her, and Kennedy really experiences what Ruth has to go through just as a person of color in society on a daily basis. When Kennedy grabs like a bag of chips and opens it in the store and says she'll pay for it later, Ruth has never done that before and never would. Employees walk around the store and basically stalk Ruth and this is not made up. The way that Kennedy described this revelation was so perfect. How when you see the constellations in the sky, you're looking for them and you can't see them. You hear about them, 
but they just look like stars to you, and then you see something, like you see the Big Dipper, and then every time you look, that's all you can see. And that's how I felt just walking down the street after reading this novel. Like I had seen the constellations, and then I was suddenly aware of every interaction that I saw, when people were overcompensating, or when they were treating someone differently. And you know, I am a privileged, white, cisgender, gay, male. I've been very lucky, but I still have some experiences to speak of regarding prejudice. And I also grew up with two moms. And something that reminded me of the things that were pointed out in this novel, every time I go to lunch or something with my parents, the waiter or waitress asks us every time, is this on one bill or two? Because it's two women and a child. And they assume that they're like sisters or something. This is not something that straight mom and dads get asked. And after talking about that and having thought about that for a while, it's like that's not even something other people would consider when someone brings a check to your family without having asked if it's on one bill or two. You don't think about how lucky you are to be the norm. You don't think about how people don't take an extra step away from you when they're walking down the street and cross paths with you. You don't think about opening the chips in the grocery store and paying for them later when no one's following you around. You don't see the Big Dipper in the sky until it's pointed out to you, and then that's all you see. Again, to say this book is timely would be ignorant. The perspective of the skinhead character was absolutely terrifying, and it was real. Again, with the research that Jodi Pico does, she did interviews with former skinheads. So knowing that, like, the events that they went to and the way that they talked and the things that they did were real and happen and that people really do have these underground, I don't know, like, societies. Terrifying and disgusting. One of the first times that Kennedy and Ruth meet, Kennedy says, frankly, I don't even see color. One of those things. There's another moment that was kind of heartbreaking when the hospital sort of turned their back on Ruth after the parents asked that she be removed from the case. Ruth realized the hospital did not have her back and was not supportive of her truly. They only wanted to tiptoe around the issue and not become involved. They did not accept her, they tolerated her, and there's a difference. And I really felt Ruth's pain in that moment. There's so many small things and small lessons that can be taken from this book. I highly recommend giving it a read. It's a great story. You know, at the end of the day, it's a very, very good book. Small Great Things really did give me sort of a, a different sense of awareness and I'm sad that it had to come from Jodi Pico and not from other people that maybe I've heard it from before. Do you know what I mean? Like, Jodi Pico is one of my favorite authors, but even she says when interviewing about this that, you know, the fact that you have to hear it from a white author, I'm so grateful for this novel. Please, please read it. And then please pick up some books from diverse authors, authors of color, LGBTQ plus authors. Take the world around you and understand it and then see what you can do, what small great act, what conversation you could have, whose eyes can you open. Thanks for watching this video. The story hit me hard. The three different perspectives, they were extremely distinct and all taught me something different. It's been a difficult year and this is the kind of book that people need to be reading. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.